Joining me right now is Democratic Congressman Rosa DeLauro of Connecticut. She's a ranking member on the House Appropriations Committee. Representative, I apologize for misstating your name um, before the last break, but thank you for your time. And yesterday, Punchbowl News co-founder Jake Sherman told me on our air, there simply aren't the votes in Congress for a short-term extension of the debt ceiling. How do we get past this impasse? Well, let, let, let's take it back a step. First of all, many, many thanks. I'm delighted to join you uh, uh, today. But uh, uh, this is, we were bipartisan uh, when the Republicans were in charge uh, in raising the debt and raising the debt limit because it is a responsible uh, thing to do. So what we do need now uh, is a, a, a bipartisan response, a responsible resu response, a patriotic response, instead of trying to hold the, uh, uh, the government hostage uh, uh, to the demands uh, for raising the debt ceiling, which would be massive cuts to veterans, to education, to law enforcement, to child care. Uh, that's not the way to govern responsibly. Uh, we have a way to do it. We should keep the debt ceiling uh, separate from the appropriations process, which is what we have done in the past. Congresswoman, just yesterday, President Biden sat down with my colleague Stephanie Rule, and one of the things they discussed was the debt limit. Let's listen. There are members of Congress that might be okay with us defaulting because they that. think it could hurt you more politically. No. Given that, are you prepared to invoke the 14th Amendment and blow through the debt ceiling? I've not gotten there yet, and here's the deal. I think that, first of all, this is not your father's Republican Party. This is a different... No, sir. A, a different group. And I think that we have to make it clear to the American people that I am prepared to negotiate in detail with their budget. The 14th Amendment rule that Stephanie mentioned has a provision that may allow the Biden administration to continue to spend money to avoid a default, even if Congress fails to raise the limit by June 1st. Do you see that as a viable solution? Well, my hope is that uh, that uh, you, you said that there were a small portion of uh, House Republicans who would like to see the government default, which is totally irresponsible, given the serious, serious consequences of that. But it is my hope that there will be cooler heads that prevail, that there will be adults in the room, and that that will not happen, that we will do what we have done in the past, that we, in a bipartisan way, we raise the debt ceiling, and then we have a bipartisan discussion of the appropriations bills and funding the government. I have negotiated uh, those efforts in the past. I did it last December. I did it a year ago, March, with uh, my colleagues on the Senate side um, and uh, with uh, Senator Shelby, Senator Leahy, um, uh, and uh, and at that time, quite honestly, um, uh, 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 the current Speaker uh, McCarthy uh, did not allow the House uh, Republicans to enjoin the debate. Well, we passed government-funded uh, bill, a budget, because with regard to appropriations, you have to have House, Senate, Democrats, and Republicans voting in order for the president to sign the bill. That has been the process. We can have a very rigorous debate about what you need to spend or what you need to cut. I've been there. I've done that. And you compromise on that. There is this view that you have to condition of sending the, the, the country over the financial cliff to be able to negotiate on government spending uh, really is uh, very, very irresponsible. Uh, and the massive cuts, as I said, we would take um, hundreds of police uh, officers off the beat, that by defunding the, the, the police. We would make it impossible for people to be able to get an education, cutting Pell Grants. Our veterans are at risk, at great risk uh, with funding. And we made a commitment to them because of the sacrifices they have made on behalf of this of this country. And child care, I will tell you that if we continue to underfund child care and not have parents feel that their child is in a safe place, they will not go to work, which is detrimental to the economy. It has to be bipartisan. My colleagues have to be responsible. They have to govern. They are in the majority. Representative Rosa DeLore will have to leave it there, but thank you for your time.